Hello my friends and welcome, let's go for the Ukrainian counterattack review. Today we have the progress from Ukrainian army but just at one particular place. The main task for Ukraine right now is to get rid of this hump that Russia created then they pushed to Ukrainian territory. They were stopped. So now Ukraine assaults from two of the directions, one from Blahodatne and one from Novodarivka. And for now this is the most vulnerable direction for the Russian army, but still Ukraine is not risking to send the main reserves to that area. Our objective is to make it flat like that and after all we'll see. So let's go to the timeline, it was yesterday like that and it is today, so it's been confirmed that Ukrainian army achieved the new goal, we took Novodarivka and also we took Storozhneva from the recent information we know that this river became wider than usual because Russia blown up the dam in one of the lakes but it doesn't create the significant obstacle for Ukrainian forces and we already crossed this river so we operate on two of the sides and it's good. If we move south to Makarivka, you can see that this village so far in the grey area. But there was some information from the Ukrainian official military command that Makarivka was taken by Ukrainian forces. Russians said that they've lost this village as well. But today some of the Russian channels say that they started the counteroffensive and they gained control over Markarivka, but it's fake, my friends. It was taken by Ukrainian army and no offensive actions was created by the Russian side. They are totally in defense. So the only village that is still controlled by the Russian army is Rivnopil, but they are jammed over there. And I expect them to withdraw from the place maybe tomorrow, because you can see there is the natural obstacle, the river with some of the lakes, and on the north there is also the river with the lakes, plus Ukrainian army is pushing them from two of the directions, and they just cannot receive supplies any longer. There is the road over here, but it is very close to Ukrainian army and the battlefield, so it's under the Ukrainian control. That's why I'm sure that this road is not available any longer for the Russian supplies in that area. It means that Ukraine will cut this stuff from two of the directions very soon. So the only way out for the Russian army is to leave this area and run. However, according to some unofficial information, let's say, Russians already left that area and Ukraine was able to get more villages under control. Speaking about the south front line in general, Ukraine tried to assault in many of the directions, firstly over here and there we were successful, taking some ground and one of the villages. Near to Orihiv there was the failure of the Ukrainian army, we tried to get closer to the front lines, but the convoy was ambushed by the Russian forces and also by the minefield itself. There were several attacks near to Hulaipole, but we didn't take the ground. And the most successful direction for now, as I say to you, near to Velika Novosilka, Russians started to run away and leave their positions in that area. Also, we tried to assault near to Vuhledar and Novodonetsk. In Novodonetsk, there was the significant fight, but no movement from Ukrainian army near to Vuhledar, we took some ground. So the length of the front line is 171 kilometers. It is very long and those numerous attack directions from Ukrainian side say that Ukraine is searching for the weak spot in the Russian defense. Then we'll find it, we're gonna move with more forces. I got a comment saying that I'm wrong and Ukraine wasn't able to reach the first line of defense. My friends, the first line of defense is not going over here, as you saw in the map of the Russian trenches or defense lines that they created. The first front line always goes over here. We also call it the zero line. It goes all across the front line and Russia has also some trenches over there. But the most robust area obviously is over here here, over here somewhere, near to Tokmak, near to Melitopol, they were able to create huge defense lines. So Ukraine cracked the Russian first or zero defense line in this area, just at the single place. 
There is the probability that Ukraine may break through the second and the third line of defense more easier compared to what we have right now. Why do I think like that? Because Russia started to send new reinforcements to the front line itself and they take those reinforcements from the third and the second defense lines. And for successful resistance they should have kept them on their positions. I know about it because we have the official reports and today Russia sent lots of the forces and numerous vehicles to fight against assaulting Ukrainian army. Now Russia tries to get back their lost positions and the Ukrainian army moves more reserves but we do not use all of the vehicles and all of the soldiers that we have but it's the head-to-head -head fight right now. The plus for Ukrainian army is that we have the good supply lines compared to Russia. Russian supply lines were targeted by Ukrainian weaponry and they are unable to send reinforcements very fast. That's why they have to use the resources that they have in this particular area and soon they will be exhausted. I think that's the main strategy of Ukraine to attack in many directions, to split Russians all across the front lines, find a weak spot, wait for the Russian army to become weaker and then move forward with the main strike somewhere in the area. Let's go to the eastern part of Ukraine to the Bakhmut area and there is no any movement from either of the sides. Russia went to total defense. And the Russian opposition forces continue to stay in the Belgorod region. President Zelensky today said that there is the movement from Ukrainian army where taking the ground and we may see it also on the deep state map review. He also said that enemy has the losses and the scale of the enemy losses is what we expected planning the operation. We got the news that Russia modified their anti-ship systems and now they're able to launch ground-to-ground -ground missiles. Also, there is the information that they moved those systems close to the Ukrainian border. The United States will send the urgent military help for Ukraine. It should be around $325 million. There will be more missiles for HIMARS and NASAMS, plus more Bradleys and Strikers, because we lost more than 10 Bradleys in the convoy that was ambushed. I read about it in the Oryx resource, so what they do, they analyze photos and videos which are coming from the front lines, and they publish how many losses either of the side has. So with the military help from our allies, we have the significant resource, even compared to the Russian Federation. Yes, we are in lack of the airplanes, but speaking about the modern day weaponry, we have lots of that stuff. I just hope that the future operations will be planned very precisely with as low losses as possible. We have awesome achievements on the front line. Two of the Russian K-52 helicopters were shot down during the recent three days. They were used to target the Ukrainian vehicles, but Ukraine brought the air defense close to the front lines. Till the end of this year, Ukraine will get five more Patriot systems. It's not just one single launcher. The Patriot system consists of many of those tracks, including radar, command center and rocket launchers. And after we'll get them, I think Ukraine will become the best air defended country in the world. Well, at least big cities will be defended for sure. Wow, it seems like Russia lost their main commander of the South Front. At least Russian resources say about it. They say that on 12th on June, the command center was attacked by Ukrainian rockets and Sergei Gorichev, that's the name of the general, the general major, he was kaput. Well, if that is true, and I think it is, because why would they publish the information that is not good for the Russian side? It is the significant loss for the Russian command, especially during the counteroffensive operation. I'm sure that the Ukrainian army planned this attack knowing the exact location of Sergei Gorechov the Russian general. Very interesting surname, Gorichov. Gorichov means hot. It will be hot for him for sure in the hell. The head of the International Atomic Agency, Rafael Mariano Grossi, is going to visit Ukraine. 
Here we have the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant which is located in Energodar town and this reservoir is used to cool down the nuclear reactors. And here you may see how water comes to that reservoir from the single channel from Kahovska water reservoir which is now emptying day by day. So we have the satellite images, it was before and this is after. So as you can see the channel is totally blocked and new water is unable to come to the station reservoir. And here is one more image, so before and after. You can see that the way is totally blocked over here and on the top. That is why probably the head of the International Atomic Agency is going to Ukraine. Probably he will also visit the occupied territory and I guess that there should be the new channel built to the reservoir of the nuclear power plant because Dnepro River still exists. There is the water, it just became shallow. According to the Welt resource, Russia sent 90% of all of their army, which is now located in Ukraine, to the Zapa direction. What I want to say that it's better not to underestimate our enemy. They have tanks, they have artillery, they have aviation and they have soldiers. Yes, they have lower morale compared to Ukrainian soldiers, but still somehow they fight. That's why the offensive operation from the Ukrainian side will be very difficult, but we don't have the other choice. We need to liberate Ukrainian territory because Russians are not just going to leave it. As for the Ukrainian side, we use around 25% of all of the resources that were prepared for the counteroffensive, based on the information from the Welt resource. It means that the main fight will be in the future. The Secretary of State Blinken said that he is sure that the operation from the Ukrainian side will be successful and Putin will have to negotiate with Ukraine, he said like that. Actually, Ukraine is not against the negotiations. First of all, Russia should withdraw their army from all of the Ukrainian territory, including Crimea. I'm sure that Blinken was speaking about this scenario. Putin just might blame someone from his circle, from the Russian army, let's say Shoigu or his deputies, whatever. So they may say that they're halting the special military operation because they achieved, let's say, their goals. But in fact, they would leave the Ukrainian territory and that scenario is perfect for Ukraine. But if they speak about the trade of Ukrainian territory, the Ukrainian people will not accept that, as well as our president and our government. You probably know that the Wagner soldiers refused to sign the contract with the regular Russian army. So Prigozhin today commented on the topic. He says that he becomes some sort of the godfather for all of the volunteer organizations, for all of the private armies. If soldiers do not want to sign the contract with the regular Russian army, Wagner will take them in their army. There will be no any obligations towards the Russian Federation, etc. They may finish their contract at any moment. So quite a good perks, I may say, compared to the regular Russian army soldiers. And probably many more Russian men will join Wagner more than the Russian regular army. So I predict that there will be the military conflict between the regular Russian army and Prigozhin's Wagner army. Actually, it has already been started, then the Wagner army was attacked by the regular Russian army, then they tried to leave the Bakhmut city. There was the accident and one of the colonels was captured by Wagner's and now he is saying lots of the bad stuff against the Wagner army. For Ukraine, this situation is just tip-top and if our counteroffensive will be successful and Prigozhin waits that it will be successful, Prigozhin will start to act in this case, trying to get the power in Russia. He has the major resource, the violence. But Ahmad Battalion soldiers signed the contract with the Russian army. It was presented, it was filmed, it was published on the Russian Z publics. So they show that they're in opposition towards a Prigozhin. Kadyrov Battalion is under the control of the Shoigu, the Russian president and Wagner is outlaw totally. All of that stuff is just the clown theater play and this guy was accusing Prigozhin 
of blaming the Ahmad Battalion for filming TikToks rather than fighting in Ukraine. So we'll see how it goes. I expect some interesting actions in Russia very soon. All right, I was up to finish this video, but we have the new military map update. So it's been confirmed that Ukraine took Lobkova under control over here. The blue color is nice. And here we moved forward even more. So it was with the previous update and this one with the latest update. We took this field, we took this field over here and there is this small village Levadne. i think a couple of the houses are there but it's not very important the main thing that we move forward and those are the awesome news even though right now russia tries to perform the country attack pushing their forces close to the front lines fighting with aviation with the rockets but ukraine still responds and responds successfully my friends now please press the like to this video also, if you want to support my job, there are some links in the video description just below. You may support me on Patreon, PayPal or just on the sponsorship of my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your awesome help and your awesome support. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.